Thank you. Uh, uh, hi everyone, I am uh, super excited to be here. Uh, welcome to one of my sessions about observing your APIs with API Gateway plugins. Let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Babur. Uh, I am a developer advocate for Apache API 6. Uh, sometimes it's so difficult to pronounce my name. People say it's from different countries. It's, it is like a Babur or Babur or like a Bibur. And then I say, okay, you can translate my first name uh, as a tiger. It means tiger, Babur. My last name, Murzokov, uh, English version will be Livermore. In this case, tiger, Livermore. You can call me like tiger or Livermore. It's up to you. So, uh, and you can also reach out to me on these social channels if you have any questions regarding sessions. So with that, we can get, uh, we can get started. Uh, first thing first, uh, what I want to do now, take a selfie because I have uh, my TikTok account. Uh, I just uh, start to run my blog recently, just a moment. Maybe this side is better. Yeah. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. And I will just put some hashtags on that. Uh, so thank you, Fabian. And now I can leave. Uh, I did uh, my job. Uh, I can go go home. I did my Instagram uh, picture, right? And but uh, I have a, today a very interesting agenda for you. Uh, we will talk about uh, what is the APIs and uh, API observability and how we can use API Gateway for observing uh, your APIs as a central point for observation. And then we will uh, break down all API observability three pillars. We know that uh, we have logging, tracing, and metrics, right? And we will learn how to enable these three pillars by using Apache API 6 plugins. And I have and then a small demo for you. Uh, I hope you will like it. And let's get. Uh, APIs, right? API, just the three letters, acronym for application program interface. By now, we are all familiar with this term, right? We are, because we are living in an uh, increasingly API-centric world. Even uh, ChatGPT uses API, because under the hood, it calls uh, some OpenAI API REST's uh, to collect some language models. Now my question to you, uh, who doesn't know what is API? Everybody knows. You don't know. You are lucky. I have a gift for you. You will get this T-shirt because you, you don't know what's the API 6. What is your size? I will handle it for you here. Uh, actually, I have enough T-shirts. Uh, if you are first the three uh, good, I will, if I get three, first three good answer, I will give it to you. And we have also some medals, uh, stickers, if you would like to get. Please feel free. It's like a free stuff from community, I would say. Uh, and we know that success of your services, right, uh, depends on the performance, availability, and integrity of your APIs. Here, another question rise. How to achieve these three indicators of success? How to achieve these three indicators of success for your APIs? Let's say we have APIs should be all the time available, right? Uh, it should be integratable. Uh, it should be a performance with a high performance. Do you have any idea? Yes, you got one T-shirt. Uh, yes, monitoring, exactly. And you, what do you say, distributing? Yeah, distributed system, monitoring? Uh, just just uh, placing it as a, as a service in a, in a distributed system. Yeah, this is also the right solution. But uh, you will get only uh, the middle. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but uh, one solution can be using uh, by API gateways. Because uh, API gateways, actually, nowadays, uh, what we do, we build uh, multiple microservices and maybe serverless APIs or multiple REST APIs for our unique, maybe, uh, the service, right? And uh, in this flow, API gateway serves as a central point for routing all your incoming uh, requests to the intended destinations. These destinations can be, as you can see, database or maybe uh, third-party API services, or it can be also some serverless APIs like Azure Function or AWS Lambda, maybe any other open source uh, functions, right? And uh, it means it uh, acts as a single layer between your clients and the backend services, right? Uh, that can manage all the traffic coming uh, to your backend services. It's a very straightforward term, right? API gateway term. And then it can also be a right point to uh, learn for your API observabilities because it's uniquely 
uh, identified to know all the traffic moving from client side to our backend service network. And instead of uh, relying on, let's say, uh, some other uh, technologies, SDKs, APIs, and services to enable this observability and improve this observability, you can easily integrate this job with API Gateway. We have a bunch of API Gateways. I'm not uh, selling any, anything, but we are talking about now uh, API 6, uh, what kind of plugins uh, you can use today. And next, for example, you can ask, uh, what is Apache API 6? Uh, maybe uh, you know the world's largest open source of software foundation, Apache Software Foundation. Maybe uh, some of you are part of it, right? Who is a part of it, ASF? Uh, who is contributing to open source projects of uh, Apache Software Foundation? You, uh, you, right, yeah. we have some people. And uh, you know, who uh, knows uh, Apache Kafka, Cassandra, Tomka? Everybody knows. And Apache API 6 is also one of the top uh, fastest growing project of ESF nowadays. Uh, you can, of course, you cannot compare with Cassandra or Tomcat, but maybe in the future. Uh, it was uh, initiated uh, in 2019, but we are still, uh, we have some open source community around the world. I am, for example, based in Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, we have contributors from US, Canada, we have uh, some contributors from China, India, and so on. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, it's a very nice API gateway solution. Uh, and as you can see, uh, API plugins uh, uh, is a very uh, hard mechanism in API Gateway that can be plugged into your API Gateway solution. With that, you can extend further uh, some functionalities. You can enable cross-cutting concerns like authorization, uh, authentication, security, transformation, rate limiting, and so on. Uh, at the same time, uh, you can enable uh, some kind of uh, observation, right? And when you're using API 6, for example, you should uh, face with multiple types of plugins uh, broken down into several categories, or sometimes uh, uh, you want something custom plugin, right, to fit uh, your needs. Uh, and with the API 6 or with similar API Gateway, nowadays modern API Gateway provides some language support. You can choose your favorite language you are familiar with, and you can create some custom plugins. Maybe you're a Java developer, or maybe you're a Go uh, developer or Python. You can choose your favorite language and write the plugins. I, let me show you. Or you, are, you, don't, you don't want to write a code. Uh, there is a dashboard uh, where uh, you can do a uh, user-friendly uh, dashboard by using it. You can just drag and drop existing plugins together to build new plugins. Uh, you can orchestrate one or multiple plugins like in this way. You can specify some conditions and, the, and also uh, put some business flow on it and generate new plugins. It's a very uh, useful feature that API 6 dashboard provides. For example, you can uh, put together uh, multiple observability plugins in one flow and then maybe enable whole observability back, uh, backend tools uh, in this diagram. And let me, you can just uh, maybe observe later. Now let's jump into the main topic. What's the API observability? Uh, can anyone tell what the API observability is? In one word. No? Traces, yes, right, right. And uh, for, to, I think I, I gave to you a t-shirt, right? For you, I, yeah. Yes, it's also right, yeah. And uh, it means API observability is all about uh, how you observe your APIs, right? Instead of relying on predetermined data, like uh, metrics, monitoring, and wait for the failure, you can uh, use uh, API observability to uh, enable announce unknown, or unknown unknowns in this uh, diagram, as you can see. Because uh, compared to uh, traditional API monitoring, we have traditional API monitoring and observability, right? This is uh, monitoring focused on uh, analyzing now and unknowns. What does it mean? Now and unknowns means you know what to measure. You know uh, the number of requests. You know number of errors. Uh, that you know what to measure, right? But uh, on the other hand, uh, API observability lets you uh, analyze uh, the, the issue exactly what was the issue and how this issue occurred by uh, learning three metrics, right? You know, uh, again, like logging, uh, metrics, and tracing. 
So because API observability nowadays is a, a part of every uh, API development teams, let's say, for example, who can use API observability in the, during the API development? Yes, you can see, for example, product managers, they can use to learn um, consumption and usage of APIs. Or maybe security team, they can use uh, to protect or maybe detect some uh, possible API threats from outside, right? Uh, so, as I said, uh, let's uh, have a look at these uh, three pillars now and learn uh, what uh, API Gateway can provide as a solution uh, for these uh, pillars, tracing, logging, and metrics. If I start with logging, it's a very trivial uh, step, right, to start your uh, observability because you can use logs to identify uh, or debug what's, the, what's happening. Uh, if you are a junior developer, you will first start with digging into logs because uh, in order to understand the project, uh, because project has uh, zero documentation, you need to have a look at logs, you need to have a look at some APIs uh, things. So here, uh, in order to use this, uh, enable this logging, uh, you can use some kind of plugins. As a, for example, API 6 provides HTTP logger plugin, Kafka logger, or it depends on which kind of integration you have. Uh, for example, you can use Google Cloud logger, uh, let's say HTTP logger is a basic logger. Let's just enable to push all the log data from your API gateway to HTTP OS or to HTTP servers. Uh, it means you can further drive some useful uh, metrics from that logs. Or let's say, uh, what about metrics? Uh, metrics are actually uh, just the data collected uh, all the time, right? Times gas, but the metrics uh, collected. But metrics you can use in the future to, in the distributed systems like Elasticsearch. You can acquire these metrics using Elasticsearch, or maybe you can uh, show these uh, metrics uh, by using a uh, dashboard, like a Prometheus, right? The Prometheus dashboard provides some metric analysis. And for these, all the uh, external popular platform, uh, let's say like a Grafana or Prometheus, Apache API 6 has uh, pre-built-in connectors, I would say. And for example, like Zipkin, uh, for tracing, we have Zipkin plugin. Uh, you can just uh, enable it with uh, just one click, and uh, it starts to learn uh, some uh, uh, metrics uh, or traces and so on. So now, uh, enough talking, right? Uh, I can uh, show something in real. As, because we have a bunch of plugins, as I said, in, uh, for the API observability, this time I decided to choose for my demo uh, Prometheus plugin. Because uh, with respect to Fabian, uh, and my, I li really like Prometheus and Grafana integration, now I will show you how you can easily enable this uh, observability very fast. For so that, uh, even you can have a look. There is my report, api6.net docker. It shows all the use cases of API Gateway in one uh, report. And it has a branch called uh, uh, API Observability. If you navigate this branch, you will see uh, a real example of uh, some plugins, how to enable it, and you can uh, uh, have a hands on exercises. Now, uh, let me switch to my VS Code. I'm using the VS Code today for the session, uh, but I'm talking about this, uh, uh, this repository. Uh, it has a five branch. You can uh, learn some of the branches, like how you can enable health check, starting from health check, and API observability. Uh, this is the starting point for you. And then it's uh, very fast to spin up this project uh, because it used uh, Docker Compose. <laughs> Uh, and we are using for the backend uh, APIs.NET, ASP.NET. You can use Java project, it doesn't matter, you can use Python. Uh, I'm actually a Java developer, but uh, I, I like to uh, uh, encourage myself to learn new languages. I started to learn C Sharp and uh, did this small project on .NET. So if you do some Docker Compose app, uh, Docker API 6, of course, uh, it will bring some containers, right? Uh, all useful containers, as you can see, uh, like uh, Prometheus, Grafana we have, and Product API, that ASP.NET, I have small endpoint uh, that maybe returns some list of uh, products uh, when you call this endpoint. As you can see, it's very simple here. Uh, when I do this, uh, it returns, uh, let me maybe see a little bit, make it bigger here. It returns uh, MacBook uh, price and some other product price. Simple. 
and and also I'm using Windows on my machine. Some of the uh, necessary containers are up and running, right? In one kind of Docker Compose app. Then, if you open the project port uh, on your favorite uh, idea or idea tool, right? In my case, uh, uh, let's say a VS Code, and you can see under uh, Commons folder some uh, common line examples that I'm going to show today to you. First thing, how you can enable uh, this uh, uh, Grafana or Prometheus, Zipkin, and so on. Uh, with API Gateway, you need to create your post upstream. If you navigate this here, you can see uh, some kind of command. Of course, you can use the dashboard to create this upstream. It's up to you. If you are like a, a hard worker uh, developer uh, like me, you can just use the kind of commands. Uh, what we are doing here, as you can see, uh, I had a product API, right? And then I am creating uh, upstream. And upstream means uh, just a set of uh, backend uh, API endpoints. And I have only single node, uh, one node. You can have a multiple nodes. You can have a multiple instance of the same product API. Uh, for the simple case, I'm just uh, creating this uh, one uh, upstream and one node. Let's uh, jump into maybe terminal. Uh, I, have, I can open some new terminal here to run this code. So uh, I'm using a, a VS, a VSL, uh, like because on Windows, it's a little bit difficult to run a Linux code. Uh, so. Uh, let me open maybe one more terminal on the Ubuntu. Yeah, here we go. I hope it's visible. And if I just click and uh, press enter, uh, now I created, uh, I said API 6, please create upstream service, register my ESP.NET Web API as a backend service, uh, and it should have this kind of configuration. Then, uh, next step, uh, next easy step, what I do is I need to create, uh, let's say, for Prometheus, I need to create a row. Because uh, API Gateway has uh, three uh, uh, very basics, like you need to create uh, upstream, you need to create a route, and enable some plugins. In my case, Prometheus plugins, right? As you can see, uh, I have some plugins configuration on the top, only single Prometheus. And I'm giving uh, reference to the upstream uh, that in the previous step we created. And that's all. Like I'm saying also, uh, URI uh, for the route to uh, find out which URI uh, this uh, plugin should absorb. I'm saying slash API uh, slash products. Here we go. And then uh, if I get this command and press and put it to the terminal, now I will enable this uh, plugin very fast. An API uh, 6 admin is saying, okay, now I have a, you have a route, you have upstream. Now it's time to test. Prometheus plugin, I enabled like this. A uh, couple of steps, right? You see the five seconds or six seconds, it's, that's all. But uh, compared to in Java projects, how you enable uh, Prometheus also maybe a little bit compared to the same steps. But uh, with API Gateway, you are just uh, extracting a little bit uh, huge work to separate service, and it's uh, highly scalable. That's uh, one, uh, one of the advantages of using API Gateway, right, uh, for your observability. And next, for example, I can generate some uh, law uh, metrics uh, to by calling my maybe API endpoint several times, maybe like this. Uh, as you can see, it's responding me uh, with a product list uh, in the response. Maybe I can do it one more time. So we have some data on it. And now, if I navigate to uh, uh, maybe if I can request also Prometheus metrics uh, to see some result, right, in this output. I can run another command, maybe like this. Here we go. Uh, as you can see, metrics are enabled. I can see some metrics, HTTP metrics, plus some API 6 metrics, as you can see. Uh, some, we have API 6 HTTP status. It was 200 uh, returned and uh, was fine. And of course, uh, it looks like a little, a little bit uh, uh, ugly, right? Uh, now you can see even maybe these uh, metrics on the dashboard. Uh, just navigate to localhost slash targets because we are running on localhost. When you deploy maybe to the cloud, you, know, so you will have a domain and so on. But as you can see on the Prometheus, uh, if I refresh it, uh, you will have soon now uh, some uh, metrics on it. Uh, of course, you can specify some uh, the parameters for your metrics. And uh, let me, we need to maybe a little bit uh, wait uh, to, to be enable this uh, metrics on the UI. Yeah, uh, let me check the targets. Uh, it's an unhealthy. Maybe uh, we need to do 
some uh, Docker Compose down and up. Yeah, every, every time when it comes to demo, something fails. It's uh, unexpected, not expected. Docker Compose uh, down. Maybe I will do this trick. And, and maybe then an up in a moment. Yep, and here we go. If I do up, uh, it will bring and refresh some Docker uh, stuff. This Docker always is kind of issue. Now, if I do this, uh, targets should be uh, now, no, it's still yes, it's upping. Yes, now it's, we are in an up state. And then I, uh, let me also generate some logs once again, uh, or even it should be visible now. Uh, let me go. Uh, API 6. Uh, HTTP status, if I have any. Uh, or even, uh, you can see any like a traces, uh, any metrics here, as you can see. Uh, I can even see uh, ETCD, ETCD is a storage for the API 6. Uh, what, what kind of data exchanging between uh, API 6 and the storage and so on. I mean, you can filter out all the metrics you want and even you can see in the graph, uh, if it's not enough on a Prometheus dashboard, you can connect with Grafana, right, very easy. Uh, you have an API 6 uh, Grafana dashboard, you can easily integrate also these logs and metrics uh, uh, by visualizing them. So with that, that was a very easy demo. I think uh, we can uh, continue or if you're interested on that. Uh, you can play with other plugins, uh, straightforward. And uh, now uh, maybe we can uh, switch to my presentation and maybe if you have any questions, we can jump into question, question session because we are already running out of time. Here are some references I'm giving out to you, for you. Yep. Any questions? Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, question, be careful. there we go. Yeah, I have one, one more t-shirt. Um, yeah, I have a question regarding uh, the plugins. Uh, for instance, um, with traffic, you have to kind of connect it to Pilot and download them as it starts. Uh, how do you develop custom plugins for API 6, and how do you package them uh, with the API gateway? Uh, sorry, once again, last uh, few sentences. There was uh, because the door is open. Sure. Sure. Um, I was just wondering about plugin development, like how rich all is the ecosystem for API 6? And if I were to develop a plugin, yeah. um, can, is it easy to package you know, with, the, with the binary, or do I have to connect to some kind of pilot and it downloads it? Yeah, very Git? nice question. I love that. I love the very, very nice question. Yeah, uh, it's very straightforward uh, because we have now support for five different languages. If you are using this uh, support of uh, the programming language, we have plugin runners. You don't have to build anything. Uh, you can just uh, run. Uh, you can maybe, of course, you need to create some binaries for Java, let's say, jar file. And this jar file has a connection by using Unix uh, socket files. It, has, it can communicate uh, with Unix socket files and it can exchange some log data. Uh, I mean, the request data. Uh, I had another presentation also. Uh, maybe you can, I can share with you after the session about how to write in Java plugin, uh, how to create plugin maybe in Python and so on. And this t-shirt for you, so I will keep it, yeah. Uh, more questions? But I don't have a t-shirt. <laughs> Hello, uh, how do you compare uh, API 6 to the API gateway like Gravity, Kong, or? Uh, yeah. which, which API gateways again? How do you compare uh, API 6 to other API gateways on the market? Uh, how do I compare or? What's uh, its main selling point? Uh, sorry, once again. What's its main selling point? Why is it better than uh, other API gateway? Code uh, coverage, do you mean? Compared to the others that exist, I think uh, it's a little bit uh, hard, to, hard to listen <laughs> from there. I will come, uh, come to Yeah, maybe uh, you can say. There's a lot of API gateway on the market. Yes, so yes. Why is API 6? Ah, oh, doing benchmarking. Yeah. Ah, okay, I got it. Uh, I'm not, uh, of course, uh, trying to sell API 6, right? I, even if I have a t shirt, I'm just giving out t shirt. I'm an open source contributor. Uh, because one reason is uh, it uh, provides hot reloading of plugins. You don't have to stop your instance. Uh, you don't have to stop the instance. You can just uh, run these plugins uh, on the fly. 
Uh, you can just switch off one plugin. You can write your custom plugin enable while this API 6 instance is running. This is one of the advantages that any other API gateway they don't provide. And the performance is on the top now. Compared to Kong API Gateway, our performance high, twice faster. Uh, you can check it out. And we have, we have, we have API 6 not only has API Gateway, it has also Ingress Controller. You can use it for Kubernetes Ingress Controller, or even you can extend it to as a service mesh uh, for your Kubernetes services. That's one of the advantages. But uh, these advantages also exist, of course. Uh, it is open source still. Uh, yeah. I hope uh, I could answer. Yeah, sorry, it was a little bit uh, hard to listen. Uh. Okay. Ah, go um, on. Sorry. Could you please elaborate a little bit on the scalability of those uh, plugins? That would sure. be nice. Ah, and uh, you're worrying about scale, how it's scale, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How much, uh, how much it can carry? How much yeah, good, observations good. can be done? Good, good question. Um, you can enable uh, multiple plugins. Of course, it's uh, this up to you how many plugins you would like to use. And uh, there should be some uh, problems when it comes to millions, maybe billions of <laughs> API calls. That's why we have a different uh, deployment modes. Like, uh, for example, you can deploy API 6 as a standalone, or maybe you can uh, uh, deploy with the multiple API 6 instance, one storage, uh, or one API 6, uh, different types of storage. Because ETCD, you know, ETCD is uh, compared to other uh, relational database, non-relational database, super fast. Uh, to fetch data. That's why it's also it's easy to deploy in many places. That's a scalable uh, without any issue. Yeah. I think, uh, does it make sense? <laughs> yeah, just a quick question. I saw there, do you know you had like uh, API 6 Nginx? Yeah. Is Nginx the underlying API gateway and API 6 sits on top of it and expands the capabilities of it? Cause sure. Because sure. Nginx is quite limited in that. Yeah, like, yeah, so. true, true. Nginx is a uh, hurt root of the uh, API 6. It's uh, built on the top of AP Nginx. Uh, but it provides uh, additional features, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have one more question. Yeah, sorry, it was a long talk. I'll try to make it short. Uh, can API 6 with, uh, work with uh, GraphQL APIs? Yes. Yes, uh, GraphQL, I think nowadays became a little popular also. Uh, sorry, I think Nicola also had the talk about tracing, right? He, he has uh, one, some of the talks uh, about uh, this GraphQL. Uh, we are improving our, we're contributing more now uh, massively on the GraphQL. Uh, my answer is it's possible, yes, you can try it out. Uh, any other questions? Okay, then thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, where, where, where's my, where's my guys? Like, <laughs> I forgot already. <laughs> yeah, no, it was yours, that's one of the t-shirts. Uh, we, we, I think we have different size. Uh, it's still one of the bigger ones. Bigger Sorry, ones, yeah. because if you produce in China, they're small, like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Thank you, that was a great talk. Oh, uh, yeah, this, this, your size is... Ah, medium? Yeah, medium. medium. Okay, that's ah, cool. Thanks. We have a 2 Excel. Oh, Maybe okay. you can extend it. Yeah, Excel, yeah. I can give it to... Who was the uh, uh, owner of this T-shirt? I forgot. Ah, you. Yeah. Come here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. It's good? Uh, yeah, it's actually good, I mean, uh, for... Uh, um, how you observe APIs now, if it's central, uh, you can do so whatever you want. That's mm -hmm. uh, oh, you are. Great, thank you. Great yeah. Talk. yeah, thank and you for the question. You have a really great energy. Like, you also make the talk. And I think uh, yeah. different style, but the same great energy. So I really love it. I copy passes from Fabian. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, take care. That was really good, man. Thanks. Thank you. We were sitting beside each other earlier as well. Uh, I was yeah. questions. I didn't see the t-shirt, though. Yeah, 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 so, sure. For free. Yeah. No, no, it was, it was good, like, the way you explained it and stuff like that. And I could yeah. see, because I was 
even before your thing came up, I was looking up stuff going, why is Engine X do this and that for the API gateway? <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to put the architecture also. Yeah, in that the, would have really helped. Uh, did you join uh, Nicholas' talk uh, before one talk? Uh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, He showed the architecture. You can see also on our website. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why I don't, didn't want to repeat the same architecture. Yeah, yeah, the, sometimes it's just like, yeah, but, I, but, uh, I know that was good because now I can see how Engine X can what another layer on top yeah, of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are using uh, it's all the Linux built on Lua.